Welcome to Gilinor. With a cuisine as diverse as the people who eat and prepare it every day. Join me on a tour of this land's many fascinating foodstuffs as we explore the most popular dishes to survive your encounters with the locals, as well as more mysterious concoctions that can boost or even lower your stats. From exotic seafoods caught fresh off the coast, to pungent stews brewed with the most dubious of spices, this is your complete guide to the food of old school RuneScape. The first type of food we should talk about is your common healing foods. These usually come from some combination of fishing and cooking or as drops from monsters. These many foods are used to heal yourself when you're doing things around Gilinor, like clearing out those pesky weeds from your garden. I made this chart of the most common healing foods you'll come across in your travels. I've listed the amount healed per inventory slot below each food. You'll notice some of these foods are eaten in multiple bites, usually pies, cakes, and potions. Speaking of potions, the only two we'll be talking about today are the Ceridoman Brew and the Super Restore used alongside it. The majority of this video will be about what you may hear referred to as hard food. The top left that heals eight is a peach from the bones the peaches spell or tablet. The bottom left is a sea turtle. To the right of that you have wild pie used to boost for slayer, pineapple pizzas, and summer pies used to boost your agility. One to the right of that is a tuna potato, dark crab, and manta ray. On the far right at the bottom there's a basket of strawberries. I'm pretty sure you can tell what everything else is. But I think I can hear the chef preparing those carambons we fished earlier for our next course. Yeah, they look like fucking camel's turd. It looks like something out of a fucking sci-fi movie. Oh my god. How much a food heals is not the only important thing to consider. Eating something while adventuring in RuneScape also causes a delay to your next action. This delay is usually 3 game ticks, or 1.8 seconds, but not all foods follow this rule. Foods with a shorter delay are called fast foods. Fast foods can have a different delay depending on if the next action is eating another food or attacking. Carambois and dishes prepared in the style of the gnomes often have 2 tick or 1.2 second attack delays, but are certainly an acquired taste. That taste, 54 years old. Mush, disgusting, and just dreadful. Some foods can be eaten together with normal foods in the standard three tick delay, and as such are called combo foods. A common example of this is the shark and carambon combo, providing a total of 38 healing and only the standard three tick delay to attacks. The shark has to be eaten first and the carambuan clicked very quickly afterward. Potions can be added into this, and it is possible to eat a hard food, take a sip of ceridoman brew, and eat a combo food for maximum healing in the same three tick delay. This is called a triple eat. What are we going with? The three, the, the three, three halibut, the two, two, uh... I'll briefly mention tick eating just to be thorough. Tick eating allows you to eat in between the damage calculation and animation of a ranged or magic attack. You cannot tick eat a melee attack. The time it takes for a projectile to hit you is after the damage calculation is made. So you can be on 1 HP and have your eat register on the tick before it gets to you and you'll survive. I've linked a great video by Purple God in the description that explains this much better. With you. Some of the foods you'll try in RuneScape have the ability to heal you above your maximum hit points level. This is called overhealing. One such item is the Ceridoman Brew, a staple of high level PVM and PvP alike. 
Brews lower your attack, strength, ranged, and magic levels by a tenth of each level, plus two. In exchange, they raise your defense level and heal you by a similarly scaled amount. Because the brews lower your offensive stats, it's most effective to use them alongside super restores at a rate of three brew sips to each sip of restore. This will keep your defense boosted as well as restore your health, prayer points, and offensive stats. Brews can heal and overheal for 3 to 16, depending on your hit points level. Another common food that is used to overheal is the angler fish. Like brews, the angler heals for different amounts depending on your hit points level, up to 22 at 93 hit points and above. This can overheal you to a maximum of 121 hit points at level 99. Anglerfish also don't lower your stats, making them one of the best foods in the entire game. The last significant food I want to talk about in this section is actually a drink. A Guthic's Rest is a tea with some special effects, healing you 5 hit points per dose, restoring 5% run energy per dose, and lowering venom to poison. The tea has four doses, so this makes it a decent choice at 20 healing per inventory slot and the potential to overheal by five. Sometimes you find yourself just shy of the level you need in a certain skill. Many foods in RuneScape have the ability to boost your stats temporarily, allowing you to complete tasks you wouldn't be able to without leveling up. After the Evil Dave part of the Recipe for Disaster quest, you can make spicy stews by using a cat to catch hell rats in Dave's mom's basement. It's best to fight the hell rat behemoths for a spice of guaranteed color. Each color of spice affects different skills when added to a bowl of stew, and the amount of spice used changes the boost amount. If you're unlucky, the stew can lower your stats instead. There are also many types of pies in the game that boost your stats as well, like the common summer and wild pies, as well as many more. There are several drinks in the game that boost your stats, including the Squirk Juice you get from Sorceress Garden, Axeman's Folly, the Poison Chalice, and Bandit's Brew, and other shit. The last category of food I would like to talk about are area-specific and special foods. Blighted foods are foods that can only be used in the wilderness. Note that the overhealing effect of anglerfish will not happen in combat in a PvP area, like the wilderness. Paddlefish are food exclusive to the gauntlet and can be made into combo food with crystal shards. There are foods that can only be found inside of raids. Certain foods are given out for holiday events each year, and these foods are too expensive to use really, so most people just collect them. The last food I want to talk about is the Purple Sweet. Purple Sweets come exclusively from Clue Scrolls. They restore 1-3 to three hit points and 10% run energy per sweet. They're the only stackable food source in the game. I think that more than covers all the food you realistically need to know about in RuneScape. I hope this amount of information didn't ruin your appetite. See you later. Get out!